So there's a lot of news going out there for the Nintendo Switch in this new year, and I have to start out by saying Happy New Year to everyone. This is our first official video in 2020. Sorry, it's taken, uh, what is it, the 4th? It's taken a few days to get my daily videos rolling here, but uh, I promise it's been worth the wait. You see, we're talking about Switch Pro today, and uh, it's a topic that's been talked about a lot in the past on this channel when we went under a certain name. Uh, Nintendo Prime and the Switch Pro is something that uh, we've really been rumored for two about two and a half years at this point uh, almost since the Switch came out uh, that, that maybe the OG Switch this Switch right here wasn't actually uh, what the Switch was going to be but rather the rushed version uh, because of the Wii U's failures now we don't have any exact information per se to state that a Switch Pro is coming this year. A lot of it's going to be rumors and speculation. Now, there is been there has been evidence that's kind of lined up over time. Uh, Nintendo is partnered with a new screen um, technology company, uh, and that screen tech has yet to show up in any of the revised Switches or the Switch Lights. So, what is that screen tech going to be used for? If it's not already going to, if it's not already used, clearly it needs to be used in a new device. We know Nintendo's always always in development on new devices. Uh, they did call Switch a family of systems when it launched, and we already have the light and the regular, and then obviously the slightly upgraded battery version, uh, and so, or at least battery life version. Uh, the battery itself is not really that upgraded. So I think that uh, clearly Nintendo has a path they're trying to do with Switch where it's going to be a long life system that's going to have several iterations to it. Uh, and we're going to talk about one industry analyst who I've been following for a long time, Dr. Sirkin Toto. Um, he has, uh, been at the forefront of a lot of the switch rumors and switch leaks and switch reporting. Uh, he has proven industry insider sources based on things he has said and predicted that have com come true in the past. In fact, last year he projected that the switch light would come out and he even predicted the name calling it the L I T E. Uh, and he obviously thinks that that guess was just luck, um, but uh, he obviously had a feeling that that system was being made. Now, he also said last year that the Switch Pro would also release. Um, he kind of admits that maybe he was being a bit more hopeful than, um, than realistic. But uh, he's nailed a lot of his projections and a lot of his predictions. Uh, and even straight up has just leaked things that he's heard from his sources in the past. Um, now, he works for Content Games out of Japan. Um, and as I said, he got pretty much a lot of things right last year. You know, he said that PlayStation 5 and a new Xbox will not launch last year. He was correct. There'll be no breakthrough in gaming uh, for crypto, blockchain, VR, and AR. He was correct. Um, he said, you know, more third-party uh, Switch software uh, and one new game from a mega franchise owned by EA Activision or Take-Two. And he was correct. Uh, and then we also got Overwatch to come over along with, you know, obviously Mortal Kombat 11 and other titles. Um, you know, he was, uh, correct about more China and Korea power in Japan. Uh, Tencent just launched the first mobile app in Japan, blah, blah, blah. So like, um, he's, he's gotten pretty much everything right. The one thing he was wrong about was that he didn't think there'd be any real competition for Steam. And it turns out that the Epic Game Store, um, has proven to be massively competitive with Steam. Uh, to the point that even PC gamers that were initially really mad about the Epic Game Store are slowly coming around because they're doing a lot of interesting things. And maybe we'll get into that topic in another video because I would like to, I would like to talk about the um, the gaming market on PC at some point and what's been happening there. But uh, today we're talking about the Pro. And in his predictions for this year, uh, he, he has a, a couple interesting things. So first, let's get into his comments on the Switch Pro. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that Nintendo will launch a Switch Pro in 2020. My guess is at $399. More specifically, I predict 4K support, bigger cartridge sizes, and of course, beefed up components. I also think the device will launch after the summer holidays to counter the rollout of the PlayStation 5 and next-gen Xbox later in the year, along with a first-party system seller game. Now, nothing he says there is uh, anything that I disagree with. I think a Switch Pro is going to come this year. Uh, I do think it's going to come after the summer holidays, which basically means after July 4th. Um, it, it's going to be more of an end-of-summer release, but I do think it's going to come out this summer. 
because it can't come out at the same time as the other platforms at holidays. That's too many new devices at once. There's a reason that like the new Samsung Galaxy phones and the Apple phones don't launch at the same time. That's just you're asking too much out of consumers' wallets at, at once. Um, and you could say, well, different consumers buy different things, but still, you know, there is a point to timing your releases better. This is why major games tend not to release on the exact same day, because if they do, uh, that can really muddle things. I mean, there's already issues when they launch in the same month, let alone the same day. So, uh, yeah, I, I could see a summer. Uh, now, there's, there's one thing he brings up that I think needs to be addressed, and that's the 4K aspect. Do not expect 4K gaming from a Switch Pro. Heck, don't even expect it from a Switch 2. 4K gaming... <clears throat> it's already very difficult on current on current hardware, Xbox One X. And it's difficult on the PS, PlayStation 4 Pro. Most games that are 4K on those systems are just upscaled, or they're using some special technique that's not true 4K. You know, checkerboard rendering, as an example, is not true 4K. It's just a type of upscaling, and it could be really gorgeous and really beautiful and way better than the upscalers that exist on our TVs. I mean, I got a 4K TV over here. And uh, its upscaler isn't the greatest of any content that's below 1440p. So any Switch content, as an example, does not upscale very well. And that's, I think, where you can look at a Switch Pro or a Switch 2 at some point as having a superior upscaler that will allow it to upscale. Uh, but you're not going to look at any game trying to play at, at 2160p. It's just not going to happen. I'm sorry to burst that bubble, but I think when he says 4K support, he means from a media perspective, like Hulu, if it does 4K at some point, because Hulu is on Switch or, or YouTube 4K, you'll be able to play 4K video, and you'll be able to see potentially better upscaled 1080p images. Uh, I think that's pretty much the extent of the 4K support. Uh, but the price point seems fine, 399 That's, I mean, that's what a PlayStation 4 costed at launch. That's $100 more than the base Nintendo Switch. And if it's a beefier system, of course, it's going to cost more, so... To me, the price point is, is, is pretty on point. Bigger cartridge sizes, um, that's, I think, uh, also just a given. I think it's going to happen regardless of a new system. But, uh, you know, 32 gigabytes is, like, the biggest cartridge right now. But we know that they can go bigger than that. And, obviously, the next step up from 32 is 64. Uh, so, seeing a 64 gigabyte cartridge at some point this year wouldn't be shocking, especially since Nintendo wants big AAA games and they require a lot of space. Uh, and, yeah, obviously, it would be Nintendo's initial reaction to next gen um, which the switch is arguably already part of so nintendo can better counterbalance uh the beefier hardware the, the, the problem nintendo is going to have is that it doesn't really matter what they do with the switch 2 or the uh the, or whatever uh this year switch pro because it's not going to be close enough to, to 12 teraflops of performance or 9.2 teraflops from the playstation 5 that's being reported it's not going to be close enough uh, to really get the major third-party ports once they abandon PlayStation 4 and Xbox One anyways. Now, there is like a new chip coming out that potentially for Apple this year that can do two teraflops in a phone, uh, which is crazy, but Nintendo doesn't currently have a contract with that company, so that's, that doesn't necessarily mean that kind of tech's coming to Nintendo. It means that kind of tech can exist, and NVIDIA definitely could have something behind closed doors they're working on with Nintendo that could do something like that. Uh, but as far as we're aware, there's nothing like that happening, and that's going to be really expensive. I mean, we're talking about, you know, Apple's putting in iPhones that they charge over $1,000 for. Um, I know there's an Apple tax, but let's just be realistic. You're not getting something like that for $400. It's just not happening. So um, I don't think that's realistic to ever expect Nintendo to do that anytime this year, even next year. So uh, what do I think the purpose of the Switch Pro will be? Well, one, it'll be to keep Nintendo's hardware in the news. Uh, just like I think the Switch Lite, even though it doesn't sell as well as the revised model Switch, it helped keep Switch hardware in the news. And I think with all the hardware news that's going to be rolling out uh, from Xbox and from PlayStation, that they're going to want something hardware-wise to keep Nintendo Switch's name in the news with what they're doing with hardware. And Switch is a very different system. I think uh, what people forget when we talk about you know, Switch competing with the next systems is that the other systems got to compete with Switch. I don't know why it's always looked at as, oh, Switch can't compete with them. They're not competing with, with Switch. It doesn't matter how many teraflops are packed in. It doesn't matter how many CPU cores or that they put 24 gigs of RAM in or whatever. None of that matters because it's not this. You can't, like, literally take the Joy-Cons off and put it in your pocket like a phone. I mean, look at this. You know, it's not really that much bigger than my phone. So, it, you, it's just not portable. Not in a convenient way. So... 
really what what's happening with Switch is that it's kind of in its own market already. But it's in a market where Nintendo clearly wants AAA third-party support. It is something they haven't had consistently for a while. And it feels like it's ramping up, and the concern is it's going to stop. Now, there is a rumor out there, kind of a, a, a retailer leak in, uh, in I, I believe it's Spain, uh, that Red Dead Redemption 2 is now being listed for Switch. And that sounds crazy. Um, or at least that's what I would have said if I didn't have my own insider information. Uh, and you, I, I can't reveal my sources on this, but uh, I have insider information that Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, was actually put on Switch already. Like the OG Switch, before light was even a thing. Like they already made it run on Switch behind closed doors. Now, that making it run on Switch and saying it runs well, saying it's something that's worth releasing, uh, that's a totally different story, and I can't tell you that, but I know for a fact that it was at least tested to run on Switch. So, when I see a retail listing, it's like, oh, I wonder. I wonder, is it actually coming? And that would just be the latest technical achievement in gaming to come to Switch, because we just got The Witcher 3, which nobody in their right mind thought was possible to put on Switch. And now, like, there's been talk about Cyberpunk 2077. No one in their right mind thinks that game can come to Switch, except that CD Projekt Red won't rule it out. They're saying they're not working on a version of it right now, but they won't officially say, yeah, we're never going to do that. Eh, they're kind of in that wishy-washy, well, maybe. Maybe. And I don't think they need to wait for a Switch Pro to do it. Any game can run on Switch. We see Mortal Kombat 11, NBA 2K every single year. The Witcher 3. We got Doom Eternal coming this year to Switch. Coming this year to Switch. Diablo 3. Civilization 6. The list goes on and on and on about the third-party devs that have showed love to this platform. There's also a huge swath of AAA third-party games that haven't come to this platform, not natively anyways. Resident Evil 7 is not on, is on Switch, even though it can be streamed on Switch in Japan, Assassin's Creed. We don't have any of the current-gen games on Switch, even though Origins, I believe, is the one that can be streamed in Japan. So game streaming is a thing in Japan anyways for Switch, but... Beyond that, we could get these games natively on Switch if Ubisoft, Activision, and other companies were willing to um, dumb down the visuals of the game to a point uh, that it runs well and looks great on Switch. And most people even say The Witcher 3, they don't even mind how it looks on TV mode, but in handheld, it, it's just beautiful. And they, they don't care that it's not as the best-looking version of the game ever. Because you know what's awesome about the best-looking version of the game ever, which, by the way, is on a PC with a 2080 Ti? The best looking version of the game ever can't be on something like this. In fact, some people always bring up like the GDP Win 2, which is the closest competitor to Switch. I don't know if you guys know what the GDP Win 2 is. It's basically a Windows portable device mini computer thing. That's It's basically like trying to take a gaming PC with you, except The Witcher 3 on that doesn't run as well as it does on Switch. It's just not as well optimized for that low end of PC hardware. It's just reality. It doesn't look as good as it does on Switch. So that lets you know there is something to this Switch hardware if you develop specifically for it, like Saber Interactive and other, all these other porting companies, you know, Panic Button and Virtuous and stuff have done pretty excellent jobs. Not perfect. There's been some hiccups here and there, but pretty excellent jobs overall. So uh, Nintendo cares about that third-party support, and they're going to want to keep it coming. And yes, I think that uh, there is some hope for Nintendo, uh, what, regardless of the Switch Pro. Um, because, uh, you know, Microsoft appears to be releasing a potentially lower teraflop version of the next Xbox so they can uh, get like an entry level for people. Um, that's going to keep games more readily able to come over to Switch. Uh, PlayStation 4 and like the OG P PS4 and OG Xbox One are still going to see multi platform third party support for the next two years minimum, you know, all the way through 2021. Uh, but I do think Nintendo is going to release a Switch Pro because they're going to want to stay in the hardware news. They're not going to want to get buried by all the hardware news. And yeah, there's going to be a killer game at launch. I don't think the game's going to be exclusive to the Switch Pro. I don't think the Switch Pro is going to have like that many exclusive Nintendo games. There might be an exclusive third-party game, you know, that won't run on older Switch hardware. But uh, I think that there will be like a killer app. Like the, the, they'll launch Switch Pro alongside Breath of the Wild 2. Or, or, or something crazy like that. I, I don't, I mean, I don't have any inside information on Breath of the Wild 2, but I'm just saying, like, that would be a pretty big deal um, to launch them together. Because remember, like, Breath of the Wild launched with Switch and Wii U at the same time and really boosted Switch, even though you could have just bought it for Wii U. So that could be the same situation here where it could really boost the Switch Pro, even though you could still play it on your Switch and Switch Lite. So, um, 
I, I'm, I'm pretty stoked, to be honest, about what 2020 has to bring with all this new hardware. Two pieces of new hardware for sure launching that have been, been kind of pseudo-confirmed and announced in PlayStation 5 and uh, Xbox Series X. Likely three with another system from Microsoft and maybe four if Nintendo gets into the fray here. Uh, and obviously all the amazing games coming this year. Uh, too many to even list. It would take me a whole video just to list all the amazing games we already know about this year. Uh, but what I want to know right now are, are what are your hopes and your dreams for a Switch Pro and a Switch 2. And let's try to be a little bit realistic about these hopes and dreams. Let's not, let's not talk about how all we want it to be true 4K, 60 FPS, 12 teraflop. Like, that can't happen. The technology does not exist in a mobile form to happen. Now, if you're saying you want the Switch Pro to be a standalone box that goes under your TV and that it kind of complements the Switch or Switch Lite, okay, I guess that is a conversation that you could have. I don't think Nintendo's doing that because then that abandoning what made that successful in the first place and trying to directly compete again which I, I think would work to Nintendo's detriment I think they own they, they own something special here with this mobile handheld market thing and this hybrid nature and I think Nintendo's not letting go of that so um, that's something that we need to uh, maybe embrace more uh, kind of let go of the home console hopes I guess uh, but who knows, maybe I'm wrong on that front, because I don't know what Nintendo's doing any more than the rest of you. Uh, so, you guys let me know your thoughts on what you hope for the Switch Pro. Do you want it to even exist? Do you want it to come this year? Do you want it to be a Switch 2? I don't think it's going to matter when they bring it out, per se, um, whether it's now or in 2023. It's not going to be 4K gaming, so we can just give up on that. Uh, so, why not now? Why not stay relevant in the hardware conversation? Um, and obviously, hey, there's got to be a Nintendo Direct soon. We're not going to hear about a Switch Pro or anything in this nintendo direct i think it will be something they talk about later uh who knows i could be wrong on that front <laughs> maybe they will uh because i don't know what's coming in that nintendo direct do you i mean there is 12 games that have uh, suddenly appeared in gamestop's computers for switch that don't have any titles and every time that happens and nintendo direct's coming i don't know are those games indie games are they triple a are they nintendo what are they i don't know there's a lot a lot of stuff happening um so stay tuned. We're going to have a lot, a lot of, like, surprisingly, this year I thought we were going to have a lot of, like, uh, maybe some PC stuff to talk about, maybe some Xbox and some PlayStation 5. But starting this year in 2020, it's Nintendo grabbing all the headlines. I have to see if that continues as the year moves on. All I know is the Nintendo gamer in me is pretty stoked. Anyways, I am Nate Jance. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, comment below as well. Uh, and hey, if you want to see more, why don't you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you get notified of all of our live streams uh, and everything else. Uh, the Nintendo Prime Podcast will be returning, uh, I believe, next week. It was going to supposed to return yesterday, but I was uh, sick. Still not feeling the greatest, or a couple days ago. Still not feeling the greatest, but good enough to do this video. Uh, we are here. This is our start to 2020. So happy effing new year, everyone. Here's to an amazing year of gaming.